The deadliest massacre in modern U.S. history was carried out by a gunman who showed a little to no signs of wanting to harm anyone, leaving many to wonder how could this have possibly taken place. Joining me now is Dr. Monica Williams, a board-certified clinical psychologist and associate professor at the University of Connecticut, where she directs the Lab for Culture and Mental Health Disparities. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Williams. Let's start with why are most of these mass shootings that we see in the U.S. carried out by white men? Well, it's our culture. Our society actually creates them. White men are taught through everything they see and experience in our culture that they're uniquely privileged, special, and entitled, and that they deserve it. Uh, they deserve to be happy. And we instill narcissism in our white men, which is actually clinically only a stone's throw away from psychopathy. So sometimes when people with this mindset don't feel like they've gotten all they deserve in life, they blame everyone else. And in extreme cases, this can be something like a mass shooting, especially if someone's already mentally imbalanced. Now, Dr. Williams, that's a serious issue here in this culture that you just mentioned. Is there, there any way that can be reversed? Well, I think that's going to take hard work on everyone's part because, you know, white privilege is, is uh, embedded into all of our, our structures and our psyche, and we don't really even like to talk about it. But the opposite of racial oppression is white privilege. And so if you have racial oppression, by definition, you also have a group that's privileged, and nobody wants to give up their privilege. All right, I want to move now uh, to the gunman and his history. He had no history or run-ins with the law. So how can someone that appears to have shown no red flags do something so extreme? Well, first of all, you know, I want to say, even though this man had money, he wasn't happy. Money didn't fix what was festering in him. He was chasing a high through compulsive gambling. And addiction never leads to good health. But I beg to differ with you. So many people have been saying there are no signs. Well, there were actually some pretty big signs. He had 47 guns. He had 47 guns. He kept a room full of deadly, high-capacity, essentially automatic weapons in his home. Um, there's almost no gun laws in Nevada. You don't even have to register them. But if someone had been keeping track and seen, hey, this guy just bought 33 new guns in one year, well, that might have been a warning. And maybe law enforcement could have kept an eye on him. Maybe someone could have checked with his psychiatrist and said, hey, is it a good idea for a guy with a gambling addiction and who's on meds for clinical anxiety to have 47 guns. So I disagree that this was completely out of the blue and unpreventable. I think all guns should be registered and it should be a matter of public record who owns guns and what kind of guns and how many. I mean, if law enforcement knew this guy had been buying so many guns, maybe they'd been keeping an eye on him. And I sure would like to know if my neighbor has 47 guns because I wouldn't want my kids playing over there. Dr. Williams, we have less than 30 seconds left. Uh, from the gunman's actions, we can see that he had a lot of rage and a hate. Quickly, can you tell us what does that tell you about his mindset? Well, we'll probably never know his exact mindset, but we know that people who are happy, fulfilled, balanced, ethical, and meaningfully connected to others don't do these things. All right, thank you so much for this insight. That was Monica Williams, board-certified clinical psychologist and associate professor at the University of Connecticut. Thank you.